This is a really good example of an exam question which gives students a whole range of marks. So this one actually came from the A-level physics paper from AQA for paper one in 2023. So this is question two. And there are some super easy marks and some more challenging ones. So the question was about um, the land speed record for a car. Um, they've got some data here. So we've got the, the speed in kilometers per hour. Um, it says that the average speed over two runs was taken, each of which was 1.61 kilometers. And then the average speed for one of those runs was 343 meters per second. Um, calculate the time taken for the car to complete the other run. So this first question, pretty much most people got one mark, but only about 50% of the students actually got two marks for this. So the first thing I want to do is convert this speed here into our standard SI units of meters per second. And I'm gonna simply do that by looking at our um, kilometers per hour and I'm going to convert this to meters by multiplying by 1,000 and then dividing by the number of seconds in an hour, so 60 times 60. Which is equal to 341.666667. Okay, and we know that's the right answer because it's going to be very close to the average of the two runs. Now, of course, this number here is the average which is going to be equal to the speed of this run plus the speed of the other run divided by two. So basically all we need to do is multiply that number by two, take away 343, and then we'll find the speed or the average speed of that other run, which is equal to 340.333. Okay. So that is the, the speed or the velocity of the other run, but we want to look at the time taken. Now, of course, here we're gonna use uh, the probably most simple equation. It's not even um, kind of given to you at GCSE because all of you know it from year seven onwards, speed is equal to distance over time. And that means, uh, and I'm just gonna write this down here because it takes no time to write down the equations. We can say that the time is gonna be equal to the distance traveled over the speed, uh, which is equal to 1610. So that's 1.61 kilometers in meters divided by 340.333, uh, which equals 4.73. Okay, now for my answer here, I'm going to give this to three significant figures. I'm gonna make sure I include uh, the unit, which is seconds. Uh, I'm also just gonna underline this so that anybody marking the work can clearly see the final answer from the whole page. And I'm gonna give it to three significant figures because we've got uh, at least three significant figures here. We've got three significant figures there and there as well. And therefore two significant figures would not be appropriate for this answer, which I think is um, something that you need to be aware of. So the first one, I think most people will have got this mark. The second bit, I'm not quite sure why people found that so tricky. Okay, the next bit had a graph with some data. Uh, this is about a new car that's being designed to break the record. I think the actual record has, has existed, I think, since the 90s, so it's been there for a long time. I know there was a, a load of stuff recently with um, kind of lots of press and lots of kind of sort of STEM projects around a, a new kind of car, but so far, nothing recently has broken this land speed record. Anyway, we've got a speed distance graph. Now that's weird, normally we have a speed time graph, so it's always important to actually try and identify what they've got on each axis. Now, you don't need to know about speed distance graph, it's not a kind of core graph, but the skills in this question are about interpreting some data. Now, um, the max acceleration at 5,600 meters uh, and the mass of the car is 6.5 times 10 to three kilograms. Calculate its kinetic energy at this point. This was a question that pretty much everybody got correct. We do, of course, know that the kinetic energy is going to be equal to a half mv squared. So that's going to be a half times the mass of the car, uh, which is 6.50 times 10 to the 3 kilograms. And we need to multiply that by the velocity. Now, um, for this, if you know that it's 5,600 meters, and the actual real exam question is a lot clearer than this, I can't show any real AQA questions. The text is slightly different. You can see that this is actually something that I just put together. Um, so basically, all you need to do is look at 5,600. I would get a ruler and I would draw a line up to show that, if, well, if that's five, it's gonna be somewhere around here. You take the reading off the side there. Uh, and the velocity, if you actually look at the real graph from the real exam paper, was 450 
meters per second at this uh, 5,600 meter point. So all you need to do is square that. And then you just put the numbers into the calculator to get an answer of 6.58 times 10 to the 8 joules. Okay, so I think that's an appropriate answer. Um, I guess you could probably justifiably give this to two significant figures because you're reading data off a graph, but I think 6.58 or 6.6 .6 times 10 to the 8 joules was the correct answer. And I think that that was an easy question. So even though um, some bits are difficult, there's going to be lots of easy parts across questions in your exam. Now the next bit, this is something that very few people actually managed to get four marks. I think less than half the people got all four marks for this. So we've got a new equation that just says the acceleration is equal to the speed times the gradient of the line. Uh, we've got a power at the maximum acceleration, which we know is at 5,600 metres. And we need to calculate the percentage of the input power used to accelerate the car at this point. So we need to think about an equation to work out power, but also there's something to do with acceleration. So I reckon my first step would be to maybe just look at the acceleration of the car at its maximum acceleration. That's going to be equal to its speed times the gradient. Now, um, at this point over here, what I could do is use a ruler. One sec, I just need to get myself a ruler. Here we go, nice 30 centimetre ruler. All I'm going to do is work out the gradient for the first part of the line over here. Uh, I'm going to do that by drawing in a triangle. Okay, don't think that this is too simple a thing to do. Every year people make mistakes by not actually calculating the gradient properly. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to work out the gradient of this part of the line. Uh, so the gradient is equal to our change in y divided by our change in x value. And that's the value for the speed that we read off uh, previously. That's the distance uh, along that in metres. Uh, and this gives us a, a value of 0 0.080. And because we're looking at metres per second divided by metres, the units are going to be second to the minus 1. So we've got our gradient. OK, now then we need to work out our acceleration. And that's just going to be equal to the speed times the gradient. Um, and therefore, the acceleration is equal to the v, the speed times the gradient, which equals uh, 450 times 0 0.080, uh, which when you put it into your calculator is equal to 36.16 meters per second squared. So this is the value for the acceleration. But we're trying to find a power. Now, of course, if we know the acceleration of something, we can work out the resultant force acting on it uh, from Newton's second law that says F equals ma, which is going to be the mass of this car. So 6.50 times 10 to the 3 times this acceleration up here. Uh, 36.16 and this gives the force equal to 2.35 times 10 to the 5 newtons. Okay so now we know the force acting on that car, the resultant force, and therefore we can use that to work out the power. And this is the equation for power that doesn't come up that often. The power is equal to the force times velocity. Now of course power is energy divided by time, power is work done divided by time, power is equal to um, uh, I squared R. There's all of these kind of electrical powers, but basically this is the other power equation, which doesn't come that much. So if we want to work at the power, that's going to be the force, uh, 2.35 times 10 to the 5, times the speed, uh, 450, which equals 1.058 times 10 to the 8 watts. Okay, now we want to look at, uh, because this is the amount of the input power used to accelerate the car, what percentage is this number of that number over there? Well, the percentage is going to be equal to 1.058 times 10 to the 8 divided by 640 uh, times 10 to the 6. Well, I guess that's pretty much 1.058 divided by 6.40. And then, of course, uh, we're going to multiply that by 100 to get it as a percentage. And when you do that, again, using your calculator, this is equal to 16.53 which I guess to two significant figures, which is I guess all you can really look at when we're looking at the data to work out the gradient of the line at this point, this is equal to 17%. So if you do that, you're going to get the full four marks. Basically, you're going to get a mark for looking at the gradient. You're going to get a mark for calculating the acceleration, another mark 
for calculating the power uh, from the force, and then of course your final mark for that 17%. Okay, and all you're thinking about is using one value to work out the next, and to work out the next, and so on. If you're not sure, just start, and then maybe the answer might pop out. The final bit, uh, again, just looking at what the examiner's report said, it said that um, only about one in six students, that's what, 13% of you, actually managed to get two marks. Calculate if the average deceleration is less than 3G. So for this, we're going to be looking at the second part of the graph as the speed of that object decreases. Okay, now my approach to this is to think about, well, here's the starting point up here, and here's the end point. And we want to look at the average between those two values. So effectively think about what that kind of straight line might look like. And now we simply have a SUVAT equation. So this is easy. If you've got a SUVAT, a kind of emotion kind of question, we're going to write down SUVAT. Do we know the distance that it's gone? Well, when the the car started decelerating, this was about 7,400, and then it finished at about 15,000. So the total distance over which it was decelerating was about 7,600 meters. And you can find that by looking at the graph in the question. What was the initial velocity? Well, looking at the graph, the value here was about 470 meters per second. The final velocity was zero, but what we need to find is the acceleration. Now that is a simple question. All of you can do this, I know. So we've got a CVAT equation without t. So we can say that uh, v squared is equal to u squared plus 2as. And that means a is going to be equal to v squared minus u squared over 2a. And then when you put the numbers in, we find that the acceleration is minus 14.5 meters per second squared. OK, is that less than 3g? Well, it is. I mean, g is going to be 9.81, so 3g is going to be about 30 metres per second squared. Um, of course, what we can do is just do 14.5 divided by 9.81, and we find that this is equal to approximately 1.5g, which is less than 3g, and therefore um, we can actually do the calculation. And it's always important in the question to actually answer what it's asking you. Is this less than 3g? Uh, therefore less than 3G. And I think it's always worth thinking about a final statement that actually answers uh, the question it's asking. So the last part, part, I didn't think it was actually particularly difficult. This is just a SUVAT equation that you're applying to the data that you can read off the graph over here. And when you do that, it's going to be absolutely fine. Okay, so that was my answer. That's my approach to question two. Um, I thought it was really good because it meant that some students uh, who were maybe not so confident with physics managed to get some marks for things like working out the kinetic energy. It also allowed people who really know their stuff to really show what they can do. And that meant the higher grade students, the people aiming for the very top, could actually show that they've got the knowledge and the skills to get most marks or to get as many marks as they possibly can within that question. Of course, if you want to find the examiner's report, if you want to download my work solutions, if you want to see the full video to this whole AQA paper, you can only find that over A-Level Physics Online, where you can find my new past paper finder.